Hello, my name is Beth Ann. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm going to try to just blitz through a pretty quick wrap up of it. Well, quick for each book because I, I ended up going through more books than I thought I would. Um, but a lot of the books that I read in October are ones that I've already reviewed or I'm going to review in solo videos um, in the next uh, week or so. So um, we'll just do this quickly. Okay, so first thinking about my TBR list and I'll link to my October TBR video below. Um, I managed to get through a few of the books, well quite a few of the books I would say, um, on my TBR list. So here are Woo, the physical books from my GBR list that I was able to get through. Um, so ones that I already have reviews posted for um, are Solutions and Other Problems by Allie Brosh. Um, this was her second book that came out this fall, and I'll link to my review below. Um, next we have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, um, an urban fantasy novel absolutely fantastic. I gave this five stars. I should have said I gave Solutions and Other Problems five stars as well. Um, and I did a solo review for this, um, so I'll post that link below as well. Um, then in nonfiction, I read Toxic Ivory Towers, which is um, an examination of what makes the academic workplace toxic for faculty of color. Um, this was a really interesting read for me as an academic, but I think it would apply equally well uh, to considering really any professional setting and how, how that setting can be um, toxic to people of color and ways to think about making it less toxic. Um, and then... Um, I also finished Communion by Bell Hooks. Um, Communion, The Female Search for Love. And I haven't recorded it yet, but I am going to do a solo review for this book as well. So look for that to come out in the next week or so. Um, so those are the books on my TBR that I finished and have already reviewed or I'm going to review. Um, then I also finished um, Einstein's Universe by Nigel Calder, which is a bit out of date. It was published in 1979, but it's a popular science write-up of Einstein's theories of relativity. Um, and I, I thought this was beautifully written and very accessible. Um, physics is still hard for me to understand, though. Um, but I will have just a little bit later in this video, I just have a very brief review um, that will play once I'm done with kind of the list I'm working through right now. Um, in the same vein, the Tolkien Reader um, is also going to have a, just a brief review a little bit later in this video, and Tolkien, I love everything he does. This was a five-star read for me as well, so just keep watching. You'll hear a little bit more about it later. Um, and then books that I read that were not on my TBR, um, so I read Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh, so like Solutions and Other Problems, um, these are essays in comic form that are uh, really, they're memoir, I mean, they're, they're about her life and life lessons, and I mentioned this briefly in my Solutions and Other Problems review. And then I read a book on my Kindle, The Heresy Within, uh, which is Grim Dark Fantasy by Rob J. Hayes, um, which I enjoyed, but is definitely not a favorite book for me. I only gave that two stars, and um, I have recorded a review of that, and I think it should go up on my channel before this current video. So um, if you missed it, um, I'll, I'll link it below, but, but it should be up on my channel. Okay. And then I wanted to jump into, oh right, so I wanted to jump into books I'll read in November. Um, so this will be a bit easy. Um, it's a shorter list because I have some holdovers. So two books um, that I have physical copies of that were on my TBR for October that I didn't finish. Um, I have I Never Met a Story I Didn't Like by Todd Snyder. As I mentioned in my October TBR video, he is, um, he's a comedian. His, all of his stories are, um, are memoir or autobiography. Um, they're about his life, but they're very funny. And he's also um, a folk musician. And so a lot of his stories are often set to song. So this is um, the written version of many of those stories. And it's, it's just as hilarious as he is in concert. Um, so I highly recommend this. I, um, I've been meaning to read these with my husband. We started reading them together a couple of years ago and, and dropped it. So we're about halfway through the book. Um, so I should hopefully be able to finish this in November. Basically, we need to stop watching the Tour de France, which ended months ago. <laughs> but we're watching the highlight clips on YouTube instead of reading that right before bed. 
Um, then also on my TBR um, is A Crown of Swords by Robert Jordan because I'm doing a reread um, of his entire series. So this is book seven. Um, and I wanted to start it during October, which, which you can see that I did. I'm not very far into it though, but um, I'd like to have this be just kind of the fantasy that I pick up um, in November when I'm feeling like fantasy. And then there were two other books on my October TBR that I didn't finish. Um, there's Me and White Supremacy by Leila Saad, which is on my Kindle. Um, the reason I haven't finished that is that's more of a like work uh, workbook almost. Um, it's short prompts thinking about white supremacy. Um, and you're, there's 20, I think there's 28 or 30. You're supposed to do it over the course of a month. Um, but I've been doing it on a much longer time frame and I didn't do as many of those as I had hoped to do this month. So I will continue with that um, in November. And then I'm almost finished with The Silk uh, the Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan, which I'm listening to um, as an audiobook. I have about four hours left. It's a long book. Um, and that is a retold uh, history of the world, really, um, but with a focus on um, the region between the Mediterranean and China. So on what I consider the Middle East from my American perspective, um, but also uh, quite a bit east of what I think we call the Middle East. But basically the region crisscrossed by the Silk Roads and really focusing on the importance of, the, of that region um, historically, um, specifically culturally and economically as um, really the arteries of global trade. So I've been really enjoying that history um, and I will give a short uh, review of that, um, I think, as a standalone review once I finished it in November. Okay, so um, in November, I am participating in Nonfiction November, and I posted about my picks. I'll link the video below. Um, but just to remind uh, folks, so for Nonfiction November, there are four prompts, and this year those are Discovery, Time, Buzz, and Movement. So just real quick, my picks are for Discovery, um, Black Livingston, A True Tale of Adventure in the 19th Century Congo. It's about an African-American missionary um, who goes from the U.S. to the Congo and starts a mission um, and I think is there for about 20 years or so doing missionary work. Um, then for time, I have 46 days, Keeping Up with Jennifer Farr Davis on the Appalachian Trail. Um, she is a record-setting hiker. She essentially ran the Appalachian Trail and did it in yeah, on the back, did it in 47 days, 13 hours, and 31 minutes. For those who don't know, the Appalachian Trail is over 2,000 miles long, so that's insane that she did it that quickly. So I'm excited to read about this. Um, and then for the prompt buzz, we have the very little literal Buzz by Thor Hansen, um, which is the nature and necessity of bees. I am a bee researcher, That um, that is my field. I have a PhD in bees. <laughs> So I'm very excited to read this. I've seen it reviewed by other bee scientists and it got very favorable reviews as being a very accurate, beautifully written um, piece of work about them. So I'm, I'm just excited to see um, what the like best popular science on bees is. Um, and then for motion uh, or movement, I have kind of an odd book. It's um, Captured Motion, the Sculpture of Harriet Whitney Frischmuth. Um, and this is a bit of a coffee book. So it's it's about um, a sculptor and so it, it showcases her work, um, but it has quite a bit as well about her life um, and thoughts about her art and the meaning of art. So I'm excited to read that. Um, so because I'm doing those four nonfiction books and I have some holdovers for my October TBR, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the rest of my November TBR. Um, cause of course I'll also read just whatever I feel like. Um, but I did just want to mention a couple things. Um, so these are also nonfiction and I swear I don't normally read this much nonfiction as I'm doing in November and did in October, but that's fine. Um, so for a book club, I'm reading Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. Um, by Robin Wall Kimmer Kimmerer. Um, I'm really excited to read this one. A lot of people um, whose views on books I really respect have really enjoyed it, and um, Dr. Kimmerer is uh, really well regarded academically, um, really solid backing there. So I'm excited to hear about kind of this blend of thinking about scientific knowledge and where it comes from um, and incorporating kind of traditional ecological knowledge um, into the ways that we think about and study nature. So that will be really good for me to read. Uh, excuse me. And then continuing on my bell hooks kick, um, because uh, I read Communion in October. So I'm going backwards in time to read her first book about love. It's called All About Love, New Vision. So she has kind of a nonfiction trilogy about love. This is the first book and Communion, which I read in October, is the third book. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll see what this one's about. 
Um, and then the last book that I'll mention on my TBR for November is the Guinevere Deception, which is a buddy read um, with Megan um, and other people in her community over at Megan's Reading Revelations. Um, and that's kind of a retelling of um, the Arthurian legends with a focus on a powerful female character. Um, so I'm really excited to give that a try. I think it is a YA novel, um, and I, I, yeah, I just love reading YA fantasy, um, and I like to kind of keep an eye on what's out there um, since I do have um, a daughter who's going to be getting into that uh, in really just a few years. So anyway, that's a quick wrap up and a TBR um, for November because um, since I've been wrapping up my October list, I'm going to have uh, more reviews to do in early November and then I'll be blazing away with my November books. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, give me a like, subscribe, stick around, um, and I'd love to connect. So if you've read any of the books I mentioned on my TBR, please let me know what you thought about them, and uh, please check out my other reviews um, for some of the books that I read in October if you want to know what I thought about them. So, Oh, and please um, stick around for the two very short reviews at the end of this video of Einstein's Universe and the Tolkien Reader if you wanted to hear just a little bit more about what I thought about these two books. I didn't want to do kind of a full standalone review for these. Um, I didn't really had enough, have enough to say about them, but um, they're both books that I've really enjoyed reading. Um, so yeah, do stick around. Those reviews are just a couple minutes. One of the books I finished this month is Einstein's Universe by Nigel Calder. Starting nonfiction November a little bit early, except just kidding, it's always nonfiction November for me. I always try to prioritize nonfiction because I gravitate naturally towards fiction, but I'd like to learn things about uh, like science and history. So I try to do nonfiction. So anyway, um, Einstein's Universe, Nigel Calder. Um, this book was excellent. It was uh, recommended to me by a friend of mine who has a PhD in astrophysics. He now does something else professionally, uh, but he knows what he's talking about. And he said this was a really accessible and short digestible <laughs> Um, introduction to the work of Einstein, um, and so it's uh, it's a popular science writer, Nigel Calder. That's what he's um, that's what he's famous for, and um, and it was beautifully written. I really enjoyed reading this. I don't understand physics, um, so it was an interesting experience reading it because as I would be reading, you know, any given chapter be about black holes and then towards the end we're getting to world lines and light cones and super gravity and and I can be reading on the page thinking okay okay yeah I'm, I'm kind of envisioning what Calder is writing about I'm right there with him I think you know I got it and then I'd finish the chapter put it down and be like I couldn't tell my husband what that chapter was about, except to maybe throw out some words, but I wouldn't be able to explain it to him. And that's fine because it's physics, but um, I think I, 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 reading a popular science book, I, I wish I could come out of it like the second that I put it down to turn to the next person, the, the person sitting next to me, because I'm excited about it, I should be able to just say a sentence about what I just read. So that was hard to do, and that might just be me. <laughs> Um, that might just be me, uh, but just a, just a heads up. So, so if you want just a beautifully written book that while you're reading it will convince you that you as a lay person are kind of understanding what's going on, but don't want to rely on being able to tell it to the person next to you, next to you, then this book might be for you. Um, it was so beautifully written that it was just a joy to sit down and read. And the chapters are um, very digestible in length and cover a single topic. So it was the sort of thing that I could read. Actually, this might be my problem because I would read before bed. I would be, I would say, I can get a chapter done. Read before bed. That's probably why I do a bad job explaining this book. But I really enjoyed <laughs> those few minutes before bed reading this beautiful writing. Um, so I think that's basically all I want to say about this book. I did just want to make one more little note. So at the beginning of every um, chapter, he has a, a chapter title just about uh, super briefly what, what the chapter is mainly going to be dealing with. But then he has kind of a Cliff Notes version of some of the conclusions you can draw during the chapter. But he uses concepts in his cliff notes that he's going to explain later in the chapter and I usually was like I these cliff notes are not useful to me because I don't know what you're talking about yet so with this one I circled one of the words because it says a postscript space is not empty but not syrupy either 
And before I start the chapter, I'm like, why would I expect space to be syrupy? That has no meaning to me. I have never had that thought that space might be syrupy. So now I'm just very confused going into the chapter. And he explained what he meant incredibly eloquently and beautifully. But I kind of stopped reading these um, little Cliff Notes versions at the end, at the beginning of the chapter, because that would happen frequently that I'd be like, wait, why would I think space is syrupy? Even though I know you're going to explain it later. So anyway, this was really fun to read. Um, ooh, there we go. Despite, um, despite my struggles, maybe don't read it right before bedtime, but worth taking a look at. One of the books I finished in October was The Tolkien Reader by J.R.R. Tolkien. And this was just such a nice little dive into some of Tolkien's shorter writing. So this is just a, uh, a volume that pulls together kind of some miscellaneous um, things by him. So it includes uh, some stories that are totally not affiliated with Middle Earth at all. Um, like one called Leaf by Niggle, which I hadn't encountered before. Um, and then Farmer Giles of Ham, um, which is quite a famous, um, I don't know what you call it, short story of his, I guess. And Farmer Giles of Ham was one of my favorite parts of the Tolkien reader because it's an adventure story um, of a reluctant hero uh, who goes off to fight a dragon um, and hilarity kind of ensues and uh, very reminiscent of, of the plot of The Hobbit, um, but in a much, uh, much shorter <laughs> format. But, um, but a little bit, some of, some of those similarities, I especially like The Reluctant Hero and that Tolkien um, really used that for, for The Lord of the Rings as well. So that was just fun and felt just very much like Tolkien, just kind of silly, um, silly and fun and very imaginative. And then the part that I like the most about the Tolkien reader is um, it's called The Adventures of Tom Bombadil um, and other verses from the Red Book. The Red Book, of course, being the imaginary kind of master tome that includes like the Lord of the Rings, um, you know, written by Frodo and Bilbo and I guess Sam contributed. Um, and so the, the Adventures of Tom Bombadil and selections that are in here is just the essence of what Tolkien is, I feel like. It's um, it's several, I think 15 or so, um, different poems and songs that are all from Middle Earth. A lot of them are, um, he says that they're kind of bits of Shire folklore. Some of them are things that Sam Gamgee wrote. Some are things that Bilbo wrote. Um, and then the, the first two are longer pieces about Tom Bombadil in poetry form. Um, and to me, that's just so much the essence of what uh, Tolkien was, you know, as a, as some, as that, that's what his imagination was. That's who he was as a writer was he wrote, you know, these beautiful pieces of epic poetry, um, and then constructed kind of the whole world to go around them. And then of course the stories of the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. Um, but the, those songs and poems are the things that really give his works life. So I'm sure anybody who watches this video reads Tolkien and probably appreciates Tolkien. Um, but if you don't, this is actually, I don't know, I, th I think the shorter stories in here, like Farmer Giles of Ham, is a really great way actually to be introduced to Tolkien because it's not a long tome and you get some of the, the things that are very classically Tolkien, especially thinking about The Hobbit. You get a little bit of a humorous story, um, but then you get um, these allusions to kind of a richer, a richer history and a richer um, folklore. Uh, just through that short story. So this could be kind of a good balance of like an intro to Tolkien, but also for someone like me who really loves Tolkien and doesn't want to commit to rereading The Lord of the Rings in a given month, um, just some nice stories to really capture that flavor. I felt at, when I read this book, at, when I finished this book, I just felt like that sense of kind of completeness, I guess, that you get sometimes when you read a really, really good book. So um, this is a five-star read for me. Okay, thanks for sticking around. If you um, saw those clips about Einstein's universe and the Tolkien reader, um, I just wanted to pop back in as future me um, and just say thanks so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please hit the like button and subscribe. Um, and I hope to see you in a future video. Thanks. Bye.